Hey, this is Math 6, Unit 3, Lesson 14 on Solving Percentage Problems. Begin first of all with a number talk, multiplication with decimals, and I want you to find the products mentally. So when we take a look at something like this, I mean, what do you notice first of all? Do you, is your eye drawn towards the 8 tenths or is it to the whole numbers? What do you notice? Okay, and that's just kind of what we're talking about here. Like, what, what are you noticing? What's happening here? So a couple of things you might think about. Uh, maybe you notice that 6 and 2 become 12, right? So you're probably okay with that part. That's just mental. Like, okay, I can do 6 times 2. But that 80% or that 0.8 becomes like multiplying by 8 tenths. Or in a sense, we're looking for 80% of 12, right? So the reason we're putting this here with the, with the fraction, or sorry, with the uh, percentages idea, is if we're talking about 80%. That's like dividing up our 100% thing, right? This is 100% of the whole thing. This is 12. So we have 80% by going 20, 40, 60, 80, 100%. So if we were to take four of these guys out of the five, right? That's 80% of the 12. So you think about, okay, well, what could that, what could that be? Um, how much could that be? What or what's left over here? Um, you know, I, that's just the mental part of it. What do you want to, what do you want to see there? Now, if you put this together, you might be able to go, well, let's reduce to 10 and say that's five and make that six. And we're going, okay, well, that's exciting. Now I have six times eight is 48 over five. 48 over 5 is not really a mental math kind of thing. Uh, I know 9 goes in there, and then I'm left with um, 9 times 5 is 45, so I'm left with 3 fifths, and 3 fifths is the same as 0. Uh, 0.6, right? So 9.6. I mean, that's a really weird number. This is not one that I would probably kind of look at and think about mental math for. Um, it's just kind of weird. If I did a mental math on this one, it, I, I'm not sure what maybe your teacher has a good idea. I would probably think, okay, 12, and if I'm going to get rid of basically 20%, what I would think of is that 10% is 1.2, so 20% becomes 2.4. So if I subtract 2.4 from 12, I end up getting, then in that case there, 9.6. So I might think of it more that way. That might be the way I would think it more of a, of a mental math problem because I wouldn't be able to get the fraction stuff like that. So when I look at this one then, uh, then it's a question of, okay, well, what's happening with this guy? Um, and again, what I see is I have four and a half times four. I know four and a half times two is, is nine, so I'm gonna double that to make that 18. So I know those two combined together make 18, and then I'm looking at 60% or six tenths of that, 60% of 18, okay? So again, what could that be? What could 60% be? Um, you know, that may not be one that I maybe know the mental math for right away. If I did the fraction thing, said, well, half of that is five, half of that is nine. Now I'm looking at 54 over five, which becomes 10 and four fifths. Again, not a very nice fraction. So maybe you took the 18 again and said, well, I want 60%, so I could say it's 1.8 times 6 and go 8, 4, and then I'm left at 10.8. Again, not much of a mental math problem there. So there may be another way you're seeing it, just right now as I'm looking at it. I'm just not seeing a quick mental way of, of multiplying those products together. Um, but you probably are because you're just seeing things better than I am today. And that's great. So let's look at the next one. Today's lesson. It's looking at a coupon. Here we go. It says Han and Claire go shopping and they each have a coupon. Answer each question and show your reasoning. It says Han buys an item with a normal price of $15 and uses a 10% off coupon. How much does he save using the coupon? Okay, so we're looking at basically answering this question. 10% um, of $15 is what we're trying to find out because that's how much he's gonna save, is he's saving 10% of $15. So 10% we know is a one-tenth, right? So one-tenth of 15 is really what we're looking at there. When we've done the tenths before, because this is our benchmark thing, we know that essentially we can take the number and then we can move the decimal over one spot there, and so we end up with 1.5, and because we're talking about money, we would call this a $1.50. 
is how much he's going to save there. Okay, and that's the idea. I could also set it up in terms of like a table, right? If I had money and a percent like so, we know that in this case, we know that the price is $15 and that's 100%, right? And so if I want to find out what 10% is, to go to 10%, I'm multiplying by 1 tenth. And so that's multiplying by 1 tenth, which is just what we have here, 15 times 1 tenth. And so I still have 1.5 or $1.50. So that's the table version of the same thing we just did right there. Now for Claire, it's a little different. Claire buys an item with a normal price of $24, but saves $6 using the coupon, okay? So we know that in terms of our, our price, let's say if we made a table again and percentage, the normal price is $24 and she saves $6. So 100% of the price is $24 and she saves $6. So what we want to find the percentage this time. So you have to ask yourself, 24 times what gets you to 6? Well, that's times 1 uh, fourth, right? Because 24 divided by 4 is 6, right? So then over here, we'll do the same thing, do 100 times 1 fourth, or what is 1 fourth of 100? And 1 fourth is 25%. So her coupon was a 25% coupon, right? So that's what we're doing there. I could also do that with a tape diagram like so. All right? We can say, all right, we know that the whole thing is $24, $24, and she saves $6 uh, by doing it with a coupon. So if I do 24 divided by 6, then I know that I end up with 4, which allows me to break this up into four segments, four segments, and each one is $6 for 25 percent. It's not quite as clean that way on this one. It looks clean because I drew it nice, but this probably is a little easier way to look at that one. Not a big deal. So um, we're going to skip the are you ready for more for today and really the next part of the lesson is a card sort activity or a, a info gap thing. Let's see what it is. Yep, info gap on music devices. And so today your teacher is going to give you a problem card or data card. And again, don't show or read your card to your partner. If you have the problem card, you're supposed to read it silently, think about what you need to know, and be able to answer the questions. And then ask your partner for specific information and explain how you can use information to solve your problem and then solve it. If you have the information, the data card, read it silently and then don't just give them the numbers that are on there, but ask them why do you need it? What specific information do you want? and then kind of reason it out to see if they're doing the right thing. So that's something you're gonna to do together and work on that with a partner now. So in summary for today's lesson, we have a little example here that just says, a pot can hold 36 liters of water. What percentage of the pot is filled when it contains nine liters of water, right? So we know that 36 is the whole pot being filled with water. The question is, well, what if you just have nine? What percentage is that gonna be? And we can solve it a couple ways. We've been looking at and saying we can solve it using a double number line. We can recognize that I could do 36 and think about times what to get to four. I get to nine is times one fourth. And do the same thing over here. And 100 times one fourth gets you 25% and you'd be able to fill in a double number line like so. We can also then use a table and do the same idea and say, how do I go from 36 to nine? We multiply by one fourth, and then I do the same thing for my percentage side of the table and get 25 there. So a couple different approaches for sol solving percentage problems. And you just have to decide which one's gonna work best for each situation and which ones you're most comfortable using, okay? Let's pause there, spend some time on your homework, and we'll come back and check it together in just a moment. All right, here we go, homework time. For each problem, explain or show your reasoning. So this first one, 160 is what percent of 40? So we have our number and we have our percent and we have 160, right? Well, really let's start with the 40 because we're saying 160 is what percentage of 40? So 40 is like our starting point. So 40 is the 100% number. And we know that 40 is 100% because that's where we're starting from. And says, okay, so what 
percentage is 160 of 40. So we want to find out what 160 is as a percentage of 40. So 40 is our baseline, 100%. So how do I go from 40 to 160? I'm going to multiply by 4. So if I do 100% times 4, I end up with 400%. So 160 is 400% greater than 40. It's pretty big. The next one, 40 is 160% of what number? So this time we have a number, we have a percent, and we have 40 is 160% of what number? So I gotta find out what the number is that's gonna be 100%. So I gotta work my way down the chain, so to speak. So a couple ways of doing this. I can look at it and say, well, let's go ahead and let's just do some, let's do half of this. Let's multiply by a half. So I can say 20 is half of 160%. 20 is 80%. Okay, you good with that so far? I can do half of that and say that half of 20 is 10, and half of 80% becomes 40%. Okay, my goal here is I'm looking for 100%. You might be thinking, well, you missed it. You went from 80 to 40. I'm okay, because watch this. I'm going to go here and do half of 10 becomes 5, and half of 40 becomes 20. And then I know that 80% plus 20% equals 100%. So I could do 20 plus 5, and that's going to be 100%, which is going to be 25. So that's one way of doing that. Is there another? Sure there is. I could probably do it a couple other ways, just doing it with a table for now. Okay. Um, yep. So, um, yeah. Number, let us see, what number is 40% of 160? Okay, so we have our numbers, we have our percent here for this last one, and we have what number, so I don't know the number, some number right here is 40%. And I know that 100% of the number is 160. So it's a question of how do I go from 100 to 40? I multiply by 4 over uh, 4 over 10, 4 tenths, and so 160 times 4 tenths becomes 64. Well, that's the way you can do that one there. So is there another way? Sure. Again, we could take 160 and do it as a tape diagram. Okay, We're looking for 40% of 160. We could break that into 10% chunks, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we would say 10% of 160 is 16. So each of these would have a value of 16. And if we want to do 40, we'll do 16 times 4 for 4 and 2 and 64. And so that probably is a little easier to see than this multiply by 4 tenths. So just to give you an example of how you could tape diagram. Okay, lots of things happening on number one. You just have to show and explain your reasoning, what makes sense to you. Number two, a store is having a 20% off sale on all merchandise. If May buys one item and saves $13, what was the original price? So what do we know? $13 was 20%. So we could do our dollars and our percent, and we know that $13 was 20%. So if I want to find the original price, I'm looking for what, what? 100%. 20 times what number gets you to 100? Times 5. So over here, 13 times 5. Well, let's just do it real quick. 13 times 5. 15 carry the 1 will be 65. So the original price was $65. Is there another way of doing that? Sure there is, right? I could take a look at a tape diagram break it up into five sections. Why five? Because we get 20% there. The whole thing is 100%, and that 20% means that one chunk is 13. So what does that mean? I do 13 times five. Once again, one, two, three, four, five, and that will give me the same answer, 65. Number three, the original price of the scarf was $16. During a store closing sale, a shopper saved $12 on the scarf. What percentage discount did she receive? Okay, so if we go back to a kind of, let's try table, just table first of all. Okay, we have our number and our percent, and we know that $16 was the original price, and it was, that's 100%, okay? 
if a shopper saved twelve dollars question is if I save twelve dollars twelve dollars all right what percentage is that that's what I want to want to find out so I can't quite get to 12 from 16 but I could definitely get 16 to 4 and I like 4 because 4 is a multiple of 12 and 16 so to go 16 to 4 I'm multiplying by 1 fourth so 4 is 25 percent you okay with that now to go from 4 to 12 that's times 3 and 25 times 3 is 75 so we would say 75 percent okay and that's the idea. All right, so that's it for that one there. Number four, select all the expressions whose value is larger than 100. Okay, so 120% of 100. Because it's more than 100% of, of the, our number is 100, we're gonna be greater. That's gonna be okay, good to go. 50%, half of 150. Half of 150 is 75, nope. 150% of 50. So 150 is percent is 100 percent plus 50 percent, right? So 100 percent is 50, and 50 percent of 50 is 75, so or 25. So we're still at 75. Not gonna work. 20 percent of 80. Well, 10 percent or 800. Sorry, 10 percent is 80. So 80 times 2 is 160. That's greater than 100. 200 percent of 30. Well, 200% is 100% plus 100%. The number was 30, so 30 plus 30 is 60, too small. 500% of 400. Well, we're already greater than 100, and we're doing 500% more. So we're gonna multiply that by five. We're definitely over 100. And then 1%, well, if the number, of 1,000, if 10% is moving the decimal over um, two spots there, um, moving it over 1% is just going to move it over, um, yeah, no, sorry, 10% moves it 1, and then 1% we're going to move it over 2 spaces there. So we're going to end up with 10, and that's just not going to work out. Too small. All right, number 5. An ant travels at a constant rate of centimeters minute, 30 centimeters every 2 minutes. At what pace does the ant travel per centimeter? Per centimeter means one centimeter. So let's do that here. If this was gonna become a one, we would be multiplying by one over 30. This becomes multiplied by one over 30. So you get 2 thirtieths, which reduces to 1 15th. So what pace is it going? It's gonna go 1 15th of a minute per centimeter. And what speed does it travel per minute? Well, we have centimeters, we have minutes. We know we start at 30 in two minutes. So to go to one minute, that's multiplying by half, multiply by half, and we have 15. So we have 15 centimeters per minute. Notice here that we did a lot of work and we could have just done the reciprocal and we would have been done. So there is a fast way to do it at times, okay? A couple more here for today. We have, is three and a half cups more or less than one liter? Explain or show your reasoning. Note that one cup is 236.6 milliliters. Okay, so three and a half cups is the same as 3.5, okay? And we know that one cup is that many milliliters. So we can multiply that by 236.6. You end up with 828.1 milliliters. Now, 821 milliliters, I need to have 1,000 milliliters equals one liter, okay? So we can see here what? I don't have enough. So that's gonna be less. It's not gonna work out too well. So that's one way of doing it there. Could you do it a different way? Yep, you could do it with a table, and you could prove it with a table, and that works out fine too, but that's what I got. Finally, the last one here, we're gonna name a unit, a measurement that's about the same size as each object here. So the distance of a doorknob to the floor, it's about a meter. The thickness of a fingernail is about a millimeter. The volume of a drop of honey is probably a milliliter, milliliter. The weight or mass of a pineapple is about one pound, not very heavy. The thickness of a picture book is about one inch. 
The weight or mass of a buffalo was probably about one ton. The volume of a flower vase is about one, we would probably say a liter. If you said a gallon, it'd be fine. The weight or mass of 20 staples is maybe one gram. They're not very heavy. The volume of a melon is about one gallon. The length of a piece of printer paper is about one foot. Okay, and that's it for today. Hope that helps you out a little bit. Quick lesson. We will see you next time.